back would be a little tough to do this all day. So I, it, it, can I move this, uh, Rob? Is that going to cause you guys grief? All right, you'll be paying attention to that a lot more than me. So um, John and I have been uh, research partners for six years, um, and John specialized more in the trial room, loved it. I, I was more on the grounds outside here, uh, and the execution that obviously took place uh, on the tennis courts of all places. Um, so what I'm gonna show you tonight, uh, what I do is I look at photos. I've always been interested in the photos that, that uh, I've been able to find, and John's found quite a few of them during our research of Fort McNair. I think we probably have in excess of about 50 original photos um, from the time period. I then take it and look at the details within those photos. That's just something I, I find. I can, I'm very detail oriented. So I create another 2,000 images from 50 filed. Tonight I've got 300 to show you in 25 minutes. So it's gonna be a little rapid fire. Um, I, I'm gonna, some of that's on timer so I don't slow down and stop. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off by taking you through uh, just a couple of the things that uh, my research and digging into the details has helped to pull out and John and I have discovered over the, over the last few years. Um, and then we're gonna take a tour of uh, the Arsenal grounds, 1865, uh, 1860s to 1865. And then I will take you into the cell blocks uh, to show you pretty well where the prisoners were. The prisoners were moved around a number of times during their stay uh, during the trial. Um, on the July 6, July 7 period, which was the last move before the execution, we have the final locations of the cells and I'm gonna show that to you visually. And then we're gonna go through a nine minute presentation. It'll luckily be automatic. Um, on the Alexander Gardner photos, the 10 Alexander Gardner photos that we know of, I think there are more, but we have 10 that, that are well known. I'm gonna take you through those and a lot of the details that came from some of those. So if, um, and then time permitting, uh, because we're gonna be going out to the grounds, uh, John and I, as you can tell by his sunburn, spent the, spent the afternoon laying out everything from the scaffold to the, uh, um, uh, the graves, uh, John Wilkes Booth's burial place, um, the entry door or the exit door that the prisoners took to come out into the yard, and the shoe factory where, where Gardner uh, was set up with his two cameras, his stereoscope and his full format camera. So you'll get a good feel for the actual uh, location when we go out there. Like I say, time permitting, it's the last part of this presentation. I'll show you how I came up at least with the scaffold position. So if, and I'm gonna try to do this. All right, first of all, three years ago, John and our research went up into the model arsenal where the last photo was taken of um, the execution. Um, he, he couldn't get up all the way, he got up as far as the attic. You'll see when we look at the model arsenal a little bit later, there used to be a fenced area right on top, which was about, the camera position would probably have been about 10 to 15 feet higher than John's position, but if you look where the overlap goes, I wanted to show you where the actual prison and where Grant Hall currently stands today. So that is the building, as Mike said, there was a debate back when, well, it's hard to, this is gonna go a couple of times. And I put a line just so you can see where the edge of the building is. Um, right here is the door where the prisoners were marched out. And we'll come back to that. So I just wanna give you a feel of what you're gonna be seeing when we go over there in comparison to the 300 foot penitentiary that, that went forward. Again, my biggest thing is taking uh, images that are high res and zooming in on it. it, it it's because when I first got into this as a kid, I was interested in the subject matter, but when you'd look at books over the years, you'd get fuzzy pictures like this, and you'd say, hey, that's great, look at this, I can see, I can see what happened. Well, about six years ago, six, seven years ago, the uh, Library of Congress published about 3,000 Civil War images online in high res definition. 
So that allowed me, and it was right around the time I started my research, we went from doing something that looked like this to something as clear as that, which then allowed me to move in and look at details that you could get pretty close. And you could see things like, you know, a piece of string that came off Mary's uh, uh, bindings as she spun. Um, another thing, you take first person eyewitness accounts, which is something I take and combine them because I, I think you need obviously both, just looking at a picture isn't always the way to go. One of the reports, when they were testing the, the traps early in the morning before the executions, this trap in particular, the one the, that's the door that's uh, down, uh, they were having trouble having it work. So when they would, there was a prop that sat below this and when they would knock it out, that's how the trap would fall. They were having trouble, it was sticking. So I knew the story from the papers that this, this is what the issue was, but I never saw a picture of it until that. That's the damage they had to do to the, the beam and the upright and the cross uh, brace just to get that trap to fall, and they used hatchets and saws. So it's that type of detail that I, I really enjoy getting into. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things quickly. It partly relates to what we're talking about tonight, but it'll give you an example of what detail can help when you're looking at history. I don't know how many of you know this image. This is General Hartranf and his staff. Um, this is uh, uh, Christian Rath, who was, who was assigned as the executioner that day. This is, this is the general here. Um, it was funny, John and Betty Owensby and I, about two years ago, we were trying to determine what was the date of this photo. There's no date on it. It was assumed it was the day of the execution. To this day, we still don't know 100%, but during that conversation, I decided I'm going to look around with my, you know, a fine-tooth comb and see what I could find. Uh, the wall behind there, the one thing we needed to find out was where was this picture taken? There's 300 feet times four sides of brick wall on the inside of this prison. So where was it taken? Well, luckily enough, I happened to spot some spots on the out-of-focus wall behind these folks. I thought, well, I'll mark a few, and I'll see with the pictures that we have, maybe I can match them. It was a long shot. You can see some around Christian Rath's head. There's a, a specific d pattern that made it uh, possibly uh, something I could hang my hat on. So this happened to be the first image I looked at, it had a long expanse of wall, and you just wouldn't believe what I found. I found the same dot pattern. And by doing that, and comparing the two together, I'll give you a second to just, what that did was tell me that off to the left of the scaffold, that was roughly the camera position and set back behind where the scaffold was, that's where that photo was taken. Now that, haven't taken that any further, it might still help us to find out whether that was July 7th or another date. Haven't gotten that far yet. Sometimes I deal with shadows. Uh, you deal with the elements, whatever you can when you're looking through pictures. I took the five photos that were taken with Gardner's uh, 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 full format camera because they all lined up. They were taken from the same angle. I'll just show you, they kind of line up there with the two lines. But if you look at the shadows on the, on the left, that's a timeline. And that, I can tell you that's roughly a 45 minute timeline from the time that first shadow, which was the, his initial starting shot of the uh, um, empty scaffold, um, which was a test shot, um, to about, this is after the, the hanging, uh, probably about 45 minutes later. There's obviously other photos that were taken, but those are stereoscopes taken from a different window, so the angles are different. So that just, again, that's just some of the things that I've done over the last four or five years just to help me to better um, understand what happened that day. Uh, so we're gonna take that tour of, of roughly 1865, and I'm gonna start off with an illustrator, because I think illustrations are very helpful as well in our research. This is Alfred Wad. He was an illustrator, Civil War illustrator. And I think it was 1862, uh, he drew this photo from across the Potomac of the arsenal and the insane asylum. And it's hard to see it there, I'm gonna zoom in on it. So you can see the arsenal penitentiary starting to come in. And what I love about the NDU, 
Susan Lemke and her team. I don't know where Susan is. But uh, they were really good to us when we first started our research. And you have two photos in your collection. And this is one here. It, it's not quite the same angle, but it's the first time that we had a chance to see the front of the building. And some of you may have never seen some of these photos. That's why I wanted to bring as many of these out as I can. You can see it's low tide with the Potomac. And we're going to start on this side quickly because I want to show you the, that's where the trial was held. There's, there are two windows up there that were exposed. There's just a, quickly, that's the, the same green is just showing you that area. The arrow is pointing to the prisoner's dock and the window that John talked about, Sam Arnold looking out and gazing out hours and hours on end. I was glad you brought that up, John. It's a great segue. And there's Sam in that window, and that's a window you'll be able to see when you go over there. It still exists. So moving over to the other side, I wanted to 